Hi guys, welcome to the completion of our mutations section. We're going to talk about spontaneous chemical changes and what types of things, depurination, deamination, that you guys need to know and what you don't need to know. So let's go. This is just an example of what deamination is, right? Removing the amino group, a nitrogen group, from a base. Here we have cytosine, right? Normal old cytosine. If you remove this base, uh, excuse me, this nit nitrogen group here, what does it turn into? Uracil. So it would be really easy for a cytosine to be deaminated or have a spontaneous chemical change and become uracil. Why does that cause a problem? Well, look, our good friend cytosine normally base pairs with guanine, right? So during DNA replication, right, the new strand would incorporate a guanine here. If it were deaminated and it looked like uracil, <clears throat> what would it base pair to here? Adenine. That's not a guanine. That would be a mutation. So that'd be an error during replication that would not get fixed because this looks like real normal base pairing. There's no problems there. Okay, so that would slip through as a mutation. Another example would be uh, methylated cytosine at the 5-methylcytosine section. Again, if we remove that amino group, that nitrogen-containing group, now this is normal thymine. So again, cytosine, even with that methyl group, still hydrogen bonds to guanine, but now thymine is going to bond with adenine. Again, this would not look like a mistake, so proofreading won't fix this, and neither will any of the repair mechanisms we're going to talk about because now the base sitting there is thymine and it appropriately bonds to adenine but that's still a mutation it was supposed to be a, C a CG and it became a TA so that's a problem again any normal base any base analog is something that something was added to it in this case a methyl group replaced by a bromo group again thymine 5 bromouracil problems normal base pairing between U and A. It can also, when ionized, cause mispairing between U and G. So again, that would not look like a mistake, but it would be a mutation, and it would lead to, upon rounds of replication, <clears throat> right, now this G is going to go to C, and so on and so forth, and so then it becomes a, a UA goes to a GC. And again, here's an example of this, just walking through right strand separation. We're going to remind ourselves what does strand separation during replication. Yes, our good friend helicase mm -hmm, breaks hydrogen bonds. Right. And this mistake will be incorporated. Right Here's this into this new strand, strand separation. That's going to mismatch here. There's a guanine. Here's the AT. Right. Again, here's going to be that that mutation that is a replication error that won't be proofread and will not be fixed and will subsequently remain as a mutation through the, every round of replication. A permanent mutation. TA to GC transition, right? Not a transversion, transition. Okay, and then just here's some examples of the same sorts of things. I'm not going to ever ask you to write out any of these structures. I won't ask you to tell me which one's base pair, but I want you to understand that if I gave you an example like this, that you could tell me the CTGA, right, would be a transition mutation, okay? And that you can understand how, right, if there's a deamination, now it looks like uracil, how these things can happen, right? Oxidative radicals change guanine into this crazy thing, which then pairs with adenine, right? And, and then the last of the chemical mutagens I wanted to mention were intercalating agents, and these cause damage to DNA because they get inside the double helix, in between the bases. Um, one of the most common is ethidium bromide. This is used in the laboratory. It fluoresces under UV radiation, um, which allows us to visualize DNA, which is great, except that it can do DNA damage as well. And then these are the other two. Again, our book shows us their structures. Again, I don't care. You don't care. I'm not going to know those. But the important part is in this orange here, 
this is showing those chemicals intercalating, just like ethidium bromide does. So it gets in between the double helix and can cause DNA damage. And so ethidium bromide, therefore, is a mutagen, and you don't want to get it on you, and you don't want to drink it. So you need to be very careful with those kind of chemicals. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about UV radiation, photochemical damage, okay? It cannot induce ionization. It's not like an x-ray. It's not ionizing radiation. X-rays penetrate, right, down to bone. That's why you can use them to see bones, whereas UV uh, is powered only th through the skin, like we talked about. The biggest problem is the thymine dimers, right, and this is actually a covalent linkage between thymines. So if these are paired, they can cause uh, stall and replication, which would then cause cell death. So covalent bonds right here between the bases of these two thymines, which puts a kink in the backbone of DNA. Look at that. There it is. And that's bad. So if this is not repaired, then um, this can cause a stall and replication and cell death. This can also cause mismatches to occur, mutations to arise, and mutations can be bad. So we don't really want that to happen. Okay, well, that was a quickie. That was just our little end of mutations. And stay tuned for DNA repair coming soon to a lecture capture new you. Enjoy. See you guys soon. Bye.